Hi, this is Christy from Sapphire Skies Farm, and I'm gonna show you how to separate out your strawberries. So if this is your first time buying strawberries, likely they will already be thinned out. But if you're on year two or three or four of your strawberries and your beds are just looking totally crowded, um, it is time for you to separate out your strawberries. So let's take a look at what I've got here. All right, so I dug out all of my strawberries and I shoved them in some pots and I'm relocating them. So here you can see just like lumps of dirt and <laughs> strawberries strewn everywhere. And over here you can see where I've um, spread, spread them out, separated them, and we even have some strawberries growing, woo! So in a couple weeks we'll get to really be getting a lot more strawberries. Now, if you leave them all really close clustered together, then you're gonna end up, let me see if this one's the right, yeah. So here you can see like there is a whole bunch of plants inside here all together and you will get smaller strawberries and less strawberries because a plant's job really is to make more seeds, right? Make more plants. And so if its roots are feeling the roots of another plant of the same species, same variety, it is gonna tell the host, the plant, that it does not need to put out more fruit. It doesn't need to reproduce. And so what you really need to do is make sure that your plants are not overcrowded or you'll have less food for you in the end, right? So if you leave those clumps all together, I've already been digging, can you see? <laughs> if you leave those clumps all together, yeah, it's gonna look really beautiful, but you're gonna end up with a lot less strawberries over the span of the year. So let's show you how I separate those out, okay? So first let me get really close and let you see where the difference between each plant is. So you can kind of see here, gotta pull some of these old dead leaves off. Oh, I got a cat jumping in my face. Hi, it's good to see you too. I'll give you loves in just a minute. Okay, so I pull a bunch of these like dead leaves out of the way so I can really see what's going on. And these are like old strawberries or old shoots that got sent out that probably rooted somewhere else. Okay, so here you can clearly see where this one is. And that's two. And that's three. Back there is a fourth one. So you can kind of find where the, there's almost like a green and then cat, get out of my face. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> okay, so I was just trying to get in here and show you, see how it's green and green. And then in between, you can see where there is not green, it's brown. That's where you know that one is ready to be separated out. And then here's a weed. <laughs> Pull that out. So that there is like a lot of strawberry plants. So let me just go ahead and shuffle those roots around. So now I've pulled these out of a dirt bed and I'm moving them in to my straw beds. Let's see here on the side. So it, if you're at home and you are putting your strawberries back into regular soil, you're gonna do the same process. You're just gonna move them in to dirt instead of a straw bale. So you'll dig a hole just like I'm digging in my straw bale and you'll put it in the hole just like I am in my straw bale, okay? Um, if you wanna know more about straw bale gardening, there are lots of videos out there on how to get your straw bales all set up. So. I actually like to just remove a lot of this dirt. <laughs> Look at this. I'm gonna have a goose that's trying to eat my... <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you funny little goose. Guess I'm gonna have to keep you from eating my strawberries all summer, huh? You could have some. You can have some. Okay, so I'm just coming over here to grab a bucket. so I can keep track of that dirt because that dirt is like, you know, got lots of fertilizers in it and I don't want it to just go back into the regular soil. So you want to get like a good shake and just shake as much of that, those roots free. You can do gentle tapping against the side. Like you definitely don't want to beat up your plants, but 
sometimes if I'm having a hard time too with getting the roots loosened up, I can like swirl it in some water and really get the roots loosened up. Um, I probably should go grab my tripod. Okay, so now I've got two hands here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab on each side of this. And it's really important to try to feel where the roots of the strawberry is, the plant, because you don't want to break this off and not have any roots, okay? Oh, cat. Sorry, my cat knocked my phone down. Okay, so you're grabbing here, and you're trying to feel for where there's some roots. And it's gonna sound scary, because you're gonna hear breaking, but that's totally normal. Because you're separating out the two plants, okay? And then give it like a nice jiggle and a wiggle, gentle pulling, and there you go. You got one. Okay, so I'm gonna set that there. And then let's find one on the opposite side. That there is a weed seed. Let me get that out of there. Okay. Oh, that one just came right off. Look at how easy that was. So, no, no, kitty, kitty. Okay, so there's two. Pulling gently, pulling gently. Jiggling them around. I can feel it there, but I just want to try to keep as much of the roots as I can here. Come on, come on. There we go. Yep, yeah, you can do it. Ta-da! Number three. And here's where it gets kind of hard because they are so packed in there. Really trying to find where the leaves are supposed to go. All right. Once again, I'm gonna hold on to the base of that plant there. So that's not all that it was attached to its host parent, parent plant. All right, there's another one. So once again, I'm pulling all the leaves from one plant, kind of separating them out. Find the base. And another one. So you can see how over the years, if you just left these in here, this each plant really makes a lot more plants. Plus it also sends out shoots and makes new plants, so. All right, let's count these out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's what I thought it was gonna be, all right. Okay, now, each of these plants have a little bit of old growth that you're gonna wanna take off. So I still try to keep this reddish stuff, but anything that looks really black, I take off. That one looks pretty good. This one here has a bunch of dead leaves on it. So I, instead of like pulling down and exposing all that, I just pull this way. Okay, Look again, pull in, all right. So look, we already have strawberries growing on that one. That's gonna give us fruit in just a few days. This one's looking pretty good. There's only one that I'm really gonna take off of that. Oh, looks like two. Just really making sure it's good there. Let's see if I can get you just a little bit more visual there. Okay, so here we've got these dead parts. So you're just trying to clean them up and give them the best possible start to the new year leaving a lot of the dead foliage of the plant that you're planting just brings in the pests that are gonna eat that plant. So, like if I was mulching around a strawberry, I could easily have old peas that I've used their, um, the old pea plant and break it up and put it around the pea, the pea under the strawberry plant. But you don't want strawberry plant over strawberry roots. You know what I'm saying? Because then it just brings in the pests for the strawberries. And the same thing goes for like, if I'm trying to use this 
stuff I'm pulling off the strawberries, I can go put it under the pea plant, but I wouldn't want to keep it under the strawberry plant. And I wouldn't want dead pea foliage under the pea plant. So you're just trying to keep the bugs that like that plant away. So here we've got some more dead leaves. That one's already gone. Looking good. All right, we got them all now. They're ready to go on the ground. So this here is the bale that I'm gonna plant in. This bale is two feet wide by four feet long. And I'm gonna do one plant per square foot. So I'll have four on each row going across this way. And then another thing I really wanted to show you guys is like the part of this plant here. So see this part right here? I always thought this was called a rhizome, but I have learned a little something that I wanted to share with you guys. A rhizome is the name of the main stem of some plants, okay? A stolon is similar to a rhizome, but a stolon sprouts from an existing stem, has long internodes, and generates new shoots at the end, such as in the strawberry plant. The plant uses the rhizome to store starches, proteins, and other nutrients. Okay, so when you're planting, you want to make sure that this is like right at the ground level. You can have a tiny bit of dirt covering it, but they can also survive if it ends up being pushed up above the soil level. Um, and then all these roots, they come down from that. So I'm going to dig out the holes, and if you're just planting in the ground you can just dig a hole like if you would in the ground my shovel's over here dig a hole and plant it down and I'm only gonna show you one maybe two because I think you guys can figure out the rest right so actually let's go ahead and space these out and get an idea of exactly where they'll go down there and if it already has strawberries coming out, I like to make sure those get shot towards me instead of away from me, you know? Oh, look, we have a weed right there. Okay. So really, you can see here that if I plant this this way, those are gonna come shooting out. So it's nicer to have your strawberries closer to you than pushing away from you, right? Grab these here. Okay, so you see that there? There's our bale. We got two, four, six, and eight. So you'll just dig a hole at each of those spots. And with straw bale, some of you have never really experienced a straw bale thing. So this is a straw bale that's been conditioned for three weeks, two weeks, sorry. And then I had a week of not getting out to it. So the third week just passed by. It just got rain and I watered it, but I didn't get anything planted. So. If it was a brand new straw bale, it would just be like really compacted. And as time goes by, it gets easier and easier to dig into this. So this is a little harder than sometimes it can be. <clears throat> but as the season goes on, it gets so much easier to plant in these bales and move stuff in these bales, but we definitely are gonna be grateful to have some compactness. So I just found a dead leaf on here. I thought I got them all off. All right. So here we have our base there and our leaves shooting out. See our roots are going down. So we want our roots to go down into the ground there. And I like to help push the roots into the ground as deep down as I can get them. And then just like with the dirt, you're just gonna push it back together. If you were using a straw bale, you just push it together, or if it's dirt, you just mush it all together, okay? This black stuff you see on top is just the leftover fertilizer from conditioning my bales. So I'll just do one more of these for you, and the rest you can figure out yourself, you know? Um, so while I'm digging this hole, I'll just let you know that I, I started off with strawberries seven years ago. I bought six strawberry plants and that was the same year I had a one-year-old my very first child I was pregnant with my second and two of those plants died okay 
So we'll call it like I had four. And from four came all the rest of these strawberries. So this is now my 10th bale I'll have put strawberries into. So here's two here, there's two more up there, and then over in the garden over there, I have four more, okay? And look, there's just so much more. I'll have more than I even need for here. I'll have to find a new home for the rest of those somewhere else in my yard, I suppose. Um, in our house, we eat as many strawberries as we can come up with. Um, last year, I was probably pulling about a cereal bowl full of strawberries out of the garden every week, maybe sometimes twice a week. And sorry, I have allergies today. <laughs> um, and I mean, we pretty much eat them like as fast as we can get them. I would really like to get to the point where I can make a pie, some jam. Um, we definitely end up with some smoothies already, but I mean, I just really feel like you can't have too many strawberries. Okay, I just wanted to share one more little trick. It is the fork trick. Okay, here's my fork, okay? Now, if you're learning about how to separate out your strawberries, then you have grown strawberries before. And there's my fork. <laughs> That's not the fork trick. Okay, the fork trick is, let's find us a good strawberry. Here's one over here. You're gonna use your fork to prop your strawberry up. So see how this fork is dirty and my hands are even more dirty. Okay, this fork is gonna go down in the ground and you're gonna stick your strawberry on it and keep it up off the ground so those slugs and those um, earwigs are not gonna get to it. Let's turn this around so you can see. I have this strawberry that is gonna turn red very soon and you can see here that it's touching the ground. And that's where the bugs find it and they like live under there and they eat away at it. So I am going to shove this fork in the ground right there. I am going to prop that berry up so that it does not touch the ground anymore. You see that space underneath there? Okay. And you can even lift the fork up a little bit if you need to get it up a little bit higher. And now those strawberries, so I actually even come back in and throw all of the other strawberries from that plant on there, okay? So now these strawberries are not touching the ground and they won't be such easy targets for the pests. All right, those are my strawberry tips for the day. If you like what you see, subscribe, come back, see some more. I'll do my best to share what I know to help you grow. This is Christy from Sapphire Skies Farm. I hope you get a chance today to get outside, get your hands dirty, and enjoy the sunshine. Just for fun, I'm throwing this picture in. This is the bed that I pulled all of these strawberries out. One thing that was a problem with this bed was it was just too wide. It was about four foot wide by eight foot long. And it was just too hard to reach the strawberries in the middle, so. That's one of the reasons why we pulled these out. And the other reason was really just to get them um, thinned out a lot and put them in a place in our garden where the kids would actually be walking past them every day and grabbing a strawberry on their way. Okay, now this last picture I'm showing you is an example of the mother plant. Right here is a stolen that's the part where it shoots off and creates a new plant this is the daughter plant and each mother plant can make several daughter plants in just one year here at the base of the plant what you can't even see it's underground is the rhizome or in the case of the plant we separated earlier, there were several rhizomes. So you can grow new strawberries from three different parts of the plant. The first way is here, the strawberry. Each strawberry has about 200 seeds on the outside of the fruit. And then each plant has the rhizomes that will split 
and multiple rhizomes will grow from the mother plant. And then each mother plant will also send out several stones throughout the year. So by the time you're all done with the year, you'll have multiple ways of making more plants, more strawberries, just from one mother plant. Do you know any more fun facts about strawberries? Share them in the comments so we can all learn from each other. Please subscribe to our channel to see what else we have going on on the farm at Sapphire Skies Farm.